Paul is headed to the Golden State Warriors. Did not see this coming. The irony of it all. I have a feeling our next guest knew. He, he has the crystal ball. He's been doing NBA for a long time. He knew this. Kevin Ray joins us down the right to the guest on here on Fox Sports 910. You you knew this was coming, right? You and you and Chris had a conversation. He he, he knew this was coming. He was never going to, to D.C. <laughs> uh, let me tell you, my crystal ball has a lot of gook on it right now. Um, <laughs> you know, I've, I've been, I got the glass cleaner out. I'm trying to. <laughs> but, uh, I, I did not see this coming from Jeez. a mile away, much less a foot away. Yeah. Crazy. Well, welcome to silly season, boys. It really is. I mean, uh, you see it, it comes down, and I did a WTF. I'm like, are you kidding me? I mean, I don't, I, I, it just was, like, so surprising. And then you're hearing, you know, when Chris Paul's doing these interviews, Good Morning America, and he was just so laid back about the whole thing. And do you think he knew there was another move here, another chess move for him? Well, yeah, I, I think he felt pretty certain that Washington, considering, you know, what they're doing, which is just completely hitting the reset button. Uh, their new general manager has been given, given authorization to, you know, to start over, uh, to strip it down to the studs. You know, Washington has tried to, you know, use duct tape and every other form of sticky uh, stuff to, to try to create a winner over the last six, seven years. And it just has not worked for a variety of reasons. And so they have finally come to the realization that, you know, you, you can't, you know, you can't have that. And which is what they had tried to do. And it still didn't pay any dividends. So uh, with that being said, looking at Chris's salary, looking at Chris's age, uh, I think he was pretty certain that Washington was not going to be his final destination. You know, we had heard earlier in the week that they were trying to facilitate a deal to get him to the Clippers. Um, and then, you know, 48 hours ago, it looked like that was going to get blown up because you had the Celtics potentially sending Brogdon there, but the entry to Brogdon undid that, you know, and, and that's, you know, this is almost like the stock market, guys. I mean, it, it is changing uh, by the minute. How about the irony of, of this, K-Ray? All of a sudden, the Suns and Golden State meet up in the playoffs, and CP3 is actually healthy in the playoffs. And all of a sudden, here he is doing his thing, going back and forth. Hopefully, we, we beat the Golden State. But can you imagine? I'm sitting here thinking and talking to Rock going, yeah, now will be the irony of it all. He's actually healthy in the playoffs. It helps us Golden State team. Uh, yeah. I mean, look, it, 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 would, it would be a tough pill to swallow – uh, I, I will say this, you know, it's still early. I mean, the draft hasn't even started. Sure. Free agency hasn't even started. So but before you start sending postcards to San Francisco uh, with Chris Paul's name on it, I would just say, pump the brake because we've learned nothing over the last even 12 hours. It's that, uh, you know, you, you might think somebody is getting ready to slip on a certain jersey, and it turns out to not be the case. So. Let's talk about Bradley Beal. That has now come through. Uh, at least it's now finalized. Wizards landing six second-round draft picks, four first-round pick swaps. This is nuts, the way that this, this sport has changed when it comes to just mortgaging the future with all the draft picks, Kevin. Yeah, and look, every team has their, you know, their methodology of, how they want to build, you know, so much of it is just predicated on the, you know, the talent that you have. I, I know that, you know, that the Suns have taken some shots from people like, you know, oh, they, they don't believe in draft picks. That's not really the case because there's a pretty good draft pick who is uh, the face of the franchise now in, in Devin Booker. So, sure. you know, there, there is value in draft picks. And, you know, on the other side of the coin, you have people looking and pointing at the Denver Nuggets. You know, they are the most recent NBA champion, and they look at, uh, at uh, Jokic. But I will tell you, and, and every other NBA general manager will tell you, it is such an outlier to get not just the, the player, but the person that the Joker is. Uh, not, not to say that, you know, there's not another one out there, but there, there is no guarantee. And also look how long it took him and the Nuggets in order for them to be transformed into champions. So, 
you know, you have to have a lot of factors going your way. And it's clear based on the moves that the Suns have made, the talent they have currently on the roster, that they feel like being a, a destination uh, for free agents and players, this is the way that they want to to build towards a championship at the moment. Um, that's not to say that we might not see a deal later today uh, for future draft picks, you know, to get back some of those ones they've lost. Well, all that being said in reference to Beal, and you look at your, you know, with DeAndre Ayton, a lot of that up in the air, a lot of chatter with him. He could be moved. If, if not now, maybe January 15th. Who's going to be that? June, that, July 15th. Uh, January well, 15th. January 15th. Next year. Yeah, next year. That could happen. Um, so who do you see coming in and running the point? Is it a combination of Bill and, and Book, or do you go find somebody, a free agent for the league minimum that's been there and done that? We talked yesterday a little bit about Reggie Jackson being one of those kind of guys, or, I mean, how do you how do you figure that out if DA does stick around in reference to having the four, and then what do you do at the point? Yeah, well, I, I think the, the, e- the easy and obvious answer, you know, here today at, what is it, 1.38 p.m., <laughs> that, you know, Devin Booker is probably the most logical right. uh, person. But, you know, since we're speaking of, of Golden State, you look at the Warriors, guys, and even in the years that they've won the championship, that they're, they've never had, like, a true point guard. Steph brings it up sometimes. Clay brings it up sometimes. Draymond Green would bring it up sometimes. When Jordan Poole was on, on their roster, he brought it up sometimes. So I think depending on your talent, you don't necessarily have to have a designated point guard. And having said that, we saw Book flourish in point book, uh, especially during the playoffs. And I think his time with Chris Paul, the fact that he's, you know, gotten older, wiser, handled the ball a lot more, he's become a better ball distributor. Um, and I believe, and I, I, I can say with great certainty, just knowing the way that Devin Booker approaches the offseason, that probably feeling like they were trending this way, that he will continue and really focus even more on his ball handling skills. Uh, because if there was one, you know, kind of drawback uh, to, to book handling it in these kind of early stages of running the point as much as he is, it's the turnovers. And I know that's something that, that eats at him and he'll look to clean up. And I have every reason to believe that he'll do so. But yeah, I think when you look at, let's say, for example, the Washington Wizards roster right now, guys, with Jordan Poole going there, They have a glut of guards, meaning somebody's going to get bought out. Somebody's going to get released. And I think that is where the Suns, the rest of the roster, will get filled out in the coming days. Suns TV play-by-play voice, Bally Sports. Kevin Ray joining us. You can follow him on Twitter at KRay1Voice with Rocket Manute today on Fox Sports 910. Got another minute. Uh, KRay, when you you talk about how the roster is going to kind of fill, is there a particular type of player you would like to see? Is there anybody that kind of comes to mind? You're like, oh man, in perfect world, if I was if I was James Jones and Vogel and the rest of the crew, this is the guy that I would try to go after. Well, or style, you know, a style. Right now, Rock, just yeah, I, I think more than anything, if you, I, I will tell you the position, which is wings. Okay. They they need wings. Yeah. Um, they, right now, they are very thin in the wing department, so. You know, you would love for them to be able to re-sign Tory Craig, um, but outside of that, their their wings uh, roster wise are very thin right now. So that's the spot to me outside of maybe finding another you know true point guard. That's the spot to me that you've you know that you've got to be able to to really shore up is getting some players out on the wings. You know, if if you could find a three and D guy, but we know that those guys three minutes. Are basically- pretty pricey in today's NBA world. But that, to me, becomes the primary position of need for this roster right now. And when you talk about need and in, in, in reference to CP3 moving on, what do you feel, Kevin, will be the uh, the biggest loss, per se, with CP3 when you look at all that he's done here in Phoenix? Well, I, you know, to me, it's just the, the overall leadership um, and, you know, the way he conducted himself and – the, the value that he brought to, to young players. Now, granted, we don't have as many young players now as we did when he first arrived here. So you hope that some of those lessons have really been ingrained in the likes of a, you know, of a, a campaign. And I believe that they are. But, you know, just his professionalism 
and just overall leadership are the two qualities uh, that, that stand out to me that Chris brought, you know, day in and day out, in games, in practice, as a representative of the organization and an ambassador. Of two minutes! Uh, you know, as I said earlier in the week, that, you know, it's bittersweet to see him go because I was really hopeful that, that, you know, we could not only capture a championship, the first for the, for the franchise, but also to have Chris being a part of it because he, he just did amazing things for this organization. Kevin, the other day I had an opportunity to uh, spend about three and a half hours with a gentleman that you know quite well, myself and Manuch, Kent Dernavanis, who uh, said hello because I told him we're talking to Yes, KD, yeah. So, uh, uh, you know, he, he misses doing the television and radio like you guys and, you know, the play-by-play and stuff. But, uh, yeah, Kent's one of those guys that, uh, you know, when this market was a small market, was one of those top guys, right? Would you agree? Kent, Kent oh, was yeah. one of the guys. Absolutely. He was the dude. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, without a doubt. You know, Kent, Kent, Kent is the guy that, you know, laid, laid the groundwork for, for a lot of guys. Yeah. So I tip, tip my cap to him. It's nice to hear his name. Brian. One minute, one minute. Big time. Hey, Kevin, as always, buddy, keep up the great work, man. Thanks for the time. You got it, boys. That's Take Kevin. Care. Stay out of trouble, will you? You got it. That's Kevin Ray, Suns TV play-by-play voice, Valley Sports. Follow him on Twitter. He's very active. On social media, K Ray One Voice. That's K Ray One, the number one voice. So good stuff as we look back at uh, CP3.